This is part two of the cycle of fifths we were talking about. And we were thinking of Sweet Georgia Brown and, and uh, um, uh, Up the Lazy River. But it could be a, a million tunes use cycles of fifths in them. So that's one thing you need to learn. But what I was saying by the leading tones of them, if you take, if we take, for example, a D7 chord, a D7 chord, not nine, you know. If we take a D7 chord and we want to play it, we're assuming that the ear hears the D, the fundamental. And in a band, the bass player will be playing around on the D and the five. If he's a, if he's not a real modern player, a real modern player will be making up his own lines, however it goes, using whatever. But in a traditional sense, a bass player will be playing roots and fifths. So that would be the D and the A. So the first thing that we could lay out, and the second thing would be the D and the A. We could leave out of the chord because they'll be handled fundamentally. So you'll find out that the two notes that are left, the F sharp and C in the D7 chord, if you listen, they carry that chord. That's really all you need. And you'll find out that on your D string, the second string is where the F sharp is, and on the A string on the top is where the C is. That's a, what they call a third, the F sharp, and a C, the seventh, a third and the seventh, a third of the seventh. Now, if we cycle that down to a G7 chord, we find out, we look at the two top ones, they've literally moved down chromatically, both strings. So you've gone, right? Now, what's happened is you've taken those two, the third and the seventh, and you've moved them down to the G7 chord. But now look what's happened. They, they have inverted themselves. Since in the G7 chord, the third is the B, and the F is the seventh, they have gone the other way around. So the third is now the B on the A string, and the seven is on the D string, the F. Whereas before, if you moved it up a half step, the F sharp was the third of the D7 chord, and the C was the seventh. But you move it down, and now you've got, you got the seven and the third on top. Now, if you saw and moved it on down to a C7, but you can't hear, right? You've gone on the outside strings. And what has happened when you hit the C7 is they've inverted back to the, the same intervals they were on the D7 chord. So now you're down on the C7 chord and you've got the third, the E, and you've got the seven, the B flat. The same as up on D, you had the third, the F sharp, and the C. So they have inverted themselves from th from third to seven, to seven, to third, to third, to seven. If you keep going, it's then seven to third, and they keep going. Now they come down chromatically, so they move chromatically. Now this is interesting, because this is where all the modern people branched off from that. They, you have the D7, and you have the D, the root, and the A, the fifth. Then you take it down to the G7, and you have that inverted. You have the D, and you have the G. That's inverted. But you have the D and the G. And then you go down to the C7, and you've gone back to the root, the C, and the fifth. So they've inverted themselves the same way, from the root to the fifth, to fifth to root, to root to the fifth. They've done the same thing going down there. So that's how the, 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 the cycle of five moves. It moves chromatically. So if we take and forget about playing the root and the fifth, as we said before, in the D7 chord. Now we're back to the D7 chord, which is D is the root, F sharp is the third, the fifth is A, and the C is seven. Now we get that by going on our hand. We go D... E, F, and in the scale it's F sharp, that's the third, one, two, three. That's why it's called the third. Then you go D, E, F, the third, F sharp, the third. G, A, that's the fifth, one, two, three, four, five. That's the fifth. So now you've got the root, the third, F sharp, and the fifth, the A. Now if we keep going, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the C is the seventh, 
and the eight becomes the octave becomes the D again. So you've gone in the scale. You've gone from D E uh, uh, from D E F sharp G A B C sharp in the D scale to D C sharp. Because remember, you have to flatten that to a C. And when you take that and flatten that C sharp to a C in the D7 scale, in the D7, you're actually in the scale of G, which is G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, which is the third here, G. So you're really in the scale. If you use the C natural in the D7, you're in the scale of G. Remember that. You're really in the scale of G. You're really playing in the scale of G because it's leading to G. It's a five leading to one. Five leading to one. All right, so if we eliminate the D and the A, the root and the fifth, and we just use the F sharp, the third, and the C, the seven, we bring it down on our bottom strings and we find F sharp, which is way up here at the eighth fret. It's, it's a half step below, step, step below the G. So you got the F sharp, now, if you find the C on the second string of the G, you go G, A, B, C. So you've got the F sharp on the C. Look there. You've got on the 8, uh, are you on the 7? I mean, you're on the, uh, wait a minute, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. You're on the 6 and the, because the the 7 is the, is the, uh, the unison. So you're, you're on the, the F sharp and you're on the C. Now that's a D7 chord.